Uh, Roy, your final year is obviously abruptly ended. It seems, reading various things you've written or, or interviews about it, like there were, the chemistry was off, there were rumblings from a few months out, even pre-season in Portugal, argument over whether you want to stay in the um, villa where you feel more comfortable with your family and Carlos Queiroz and then you break your foot and you come back and Queiroz isn't overly welcoming, you feel, when you come back, Chucks you a bib, you, you stand up front, you be up front. Um, do, what's your, like, do, do, you, do you feel, did you, um, yeah, I'm sure your reaction. Did you get a bad feeling? Like, did you feel so, something's really off here and, and this yeah, is going to end? Is, yeah, there was. Uh, again, you're talking about going back pre-season. I remember it was the first time at United, they said, remember the families come and join us in Portugal pre-season. Yeah. I want a great lover of that stuff. You know, I always think if you're training, you're professional, keep the families away, you know. Just have boundaries, even with your own family. Um, <laughs> But I won't bore you up. But yeah, Carlos yeah. was a strange one. Carlos, even when I came back, and it was, this was before when I broke my foot at Liverpool, I'd hurt my hamstring in pre-season. I remember speaking, I was due to come back, and I kept, usually when, you, when you're injured and you're a first-team player, you go back and you train with the reserves for a week. That's course, and you get your fitness levels up. But he was keeping me, um, he was saying, no, you're not ready to join back in. And I don't know if Gary remembers. I remember eventually I did come back in and back in training with the first team. And this was still early in the season. What, you'd stand there on the, the training pitch and we go, yeah, we're going to have an aviator, and I'm going to hear your teams. And I remember, I'll never forget it. And I remember Carlos, and um, he kind of called out the teams. And, and I stood there, and I was stood there. And again, I'm a senior player at the club who I thought I'd, I'd had a, a decent career at United. Um, I was into my last year on my contract, and I probably thought this would probably be my last year anyway. I, I never felt the club owed me anything. I had no hang-ups on any of that stuff. I, no problem. I had a good go off it. And... Um, and there was incidents, and, and he, I said, oh, Carlos, and I was stood there, and I remember, I always remember, I don't know if Gary remembers it, and he picked up a bib, and he just threw it at me, he says, you just stand up front. I remember going, okay. <laughs> you know, he's added to the list. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but it, it, because I was on the train, I go, listen, I don't know, again, if people think, oh, I, 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 I didn't kick off, and I remember the players afterwards going, Jesus, you, you, you were calm with all that stuff. I says, yeah. And then later on when I broke my foot, and then, and strangely enough, we go back to this famous video I was supposed to have done. I'm going to blame Gary a little bit for this, because um, I think Gary was supposed to do the game, but I was back out with my broken foot, and the manager said to me, if you want to go off on holiday, and I ended up in Dubai, and the United game against Middlesbrough was on the television in the hotel, and I am watching it, and I, just, I swapped, Gary was doing the game, and I definitely, do you remember? Yeah, and I yeah. swapped with Gary. I said, well, I do that game because I'm not here. Each player took a turn every week of analyzing the game you just played in. MUTV, under the United umbrella. So I came back and I had to do the Middlesbrough game, where I think it was 4-1 or 4-2. I think yeah, Middlesbrough won 4-1 or 4-2 or something. So I'm watching the game, as you do for MUTV, it's happening. You analyze, you go, oh, I thought you could have done better. No. I didn't think it was anything too dramatic. What's the worst, what's genuinely, what, what would you feel might have been the worst thing you said or the thing that would have crossed the line publicly? Um, I, I can tell I, you. I'd get rid of all of them. No, no, I am. Um, <laughs> no, I, honestly, I'm, honestly, I, I'm the first to, I'm the first to, I'm first to be critical of myself, but afterwards when the next few days where it really took off, whereas the video has been destroyed, I'm going, destroyed, that's a bit strong. <laughs> Because I remember thinking that going, and then I started to doubt myself, what did I see on the video? <laughs> and then the United spin, and I think because I was into the man last year, Carlos definitely had issues with me. What he thought I was too strong in the dressing room, I don't know. And there was definitely a bit of tension there. There's no getting away from it. Yeah. In all my time at United, sometimes there was tension early in my career. I remember I fell out with Alex Ferguson about, and I, I think he was going to say, I'm going to, Leeds were in for me or something at the time, and Robbo was at Middlesbrough, and, and in his office, and it was proper heated, you know? But... I was kind of really important asset to Man United then. I was now 34. I was trying to see it from their point of view. He's 34. He's, he's the captain. He's maybe losing his way a little bit, my influence on the team, even though my last, my last game was at Anfield with Drew Nill. I remember I was able to hold my own. I don't think my career was... I was in free fall yeah. because I was doing a job in the middle of the park sitting there, which I think I could have done with my eyes closed anyway because my experience... So then this video thing started really getting nasty and the media were saying... I, and I remember going... This is, where's this going to, this kind of video thing? And eventually with, with Ferguson, and then before we know, we're having a heated argument in front of all the players. My only consolation before I left Man United, 
And as I said, I'm first to say if I kind of stepped out of line. But put it this way, Man United, for the video, I got a letter about a week later. United tried to find me £5,000 for my video. 5000 trust me. I've been finding a lot more Man United for sending offs. So 5000 a player gets five, you get fined 5000 for being late. Sure. That was a, a kind of small fine. And I remember I appealed it. I said, I'm not paying the 5000 I, I did. I, 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 I've been fined before. I've been fined it's hundreds of thousand pounds. And I went, yeah, I'll take it. I got sent off. I shouldn't have. Never appealed anything. And I think because of it, I appealed a fine. I'm sure, I think Ferguson went, oh, you're kind of challenging me now. Yeah. But I was. I wasn't paying no fine because I thought the video was fine. And the key for me, again, kind of, kind of skipping a few bits and pieces here, I ended up watching the video with the players and the staff. And I remember we were all walking up to watch the video. Listen, Gary might say something different, I don't. And I remember walking up to the video with the players, I went, we need to watch this because, lads, this is not true. What I was supposed to have spoke about players' wages. I had no interest in other people's wages. That was none of my business. Yeah. But, all, but I think United was giving that stuff out. I think the United machine was like, come on, you know, especially with the World Cup after Saipan, people were saying, yeah, well, let's just paint the picture. People need to look at the facts. And we ended up and I went, can we watch the video? This video that was destroyed. Um, and we watched the video and I remember looking and going, I hope it's not as bad as I think. Yeah. <laughs> and when I watched it, it was okay. I didn't think for one minute I was out of order. I didn't, I was like, oh, thank God. And then the manager put it to all the players. We were in his office. He went, lads, have any of you got a problem? I think Fletch said something. Or maybe you could have been a bit easy on some, but not in two major. All the other players are going, no, we know Roy, we got beaten 4-1 or 4-2. I had to do the video. It could have been Gary's. It could have been me the following week doing a game we'd won. What was I supposed to say? Oh, the lads played great. We lost 4-1 or 4-2. <laughs> so, the, and then that's when, and before you know it, there's a bit, Carla said something to me. I told him where to go. And then, the, again, the madness of it all. You're on about, I'm an experienced player. I was 34 at the time. A week or two later, I was getting due to play a reserve game. Alex Ferguson wouldn't let me play in it. He said, get your solicitor up. And I remember meeting my solicitor on the, I think it was a Friday morning. I met him at, um, at a, a hotel near the airport. He'd come up from London. And he said, what's this meeting about? I've been called up to see him. And I said, no, they probably want to get rid of me. What? He couldn't believe it. And Michael is a clever guy, good at negotiation. He'd done my contracts at United. I think United had a lot of respect for him, so we're going to see United, me and Michael. This was about nine o'clock. The players obviously were playing on the train on the Friday. We were playing, I think, Charlton away on the Saturday. Again, stop me if I'm wrong. Um, I'll wait till I'm finished. <laughs> I, um, I, so I go into an office. Are these your questions? So I go into an office. David Gill's there with Alex Ferguson. I'd worked with Alex Ferguson for 12 and a bit years. If he wanted to say, Roy, chat, listen, our days are numbered. Your contract in the summer, we'd shake hands. Hey, no problem. Yeah. Listen, I'll survive. Don't worry. And he said, look, Roy, I think we've come to the end of it. And I remember looking at him going, right. Yeah. And my solicitor's like, gone, he's gone white, Michael. And he says, yeah, we've done a statement, passed across the statement. I went, right. We'd like to thank you for 11 and a half years of service. And I went, All right. I said, I said, just to let you know, I've been here 12 and a half. You know, <laughs> this is true. But this is all part of the game, you know, to right. kind of. And they went, and the two of them looked at each other, David Gill and Ferguson, going, oh, is it, is it 12 and a half? Oh, is it 12? I said, yeah, I came the first year, we won the double, you know? All oh, right. Um, <laughs> and they said, you and Michael, we'll give you and Michael five minutes to yourselves or whatever. And I said, well, if I leave, can I sign for somebody? And Ferguson went, yeah, 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 because your contract would be terminated. And this was a Friday, I remember going, right. Forget about payoffs and all that, carry on. And he left, and my solicitor I was with Michael, and Michael went, what do you reckon to this? I went, yeah, let's get out of here. Yeah, right. I said, no. And what I should have done, obviously, listen, should have done my homework, should have found out if I could sign for a team, because ultimately, this was what I think. And I remember I was still coming back from my broken foot. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't up to speed. I obviously later found out that weekend I couldn't go to a club until January, which caused problems because of my fitness levels. And that was the end of it. And I remember going home, and I was home at all half nine. It's not as if I dragged out for the day and negotiate. Yeah. And Michael stayed there. He was doing the contract. And I remember Michael ringing me home going, um, United, apparently, there's... They've got cash flow problems in terms of any money, you know. I they can stick it, you know. Listen, you know, Man United cash flow problems do me a favour. And, um, and that was it. But then all the other stuff that came out afterwards as if I'd done something really bad. But I, as, as much as I'm not one for um, carrying grudges, the, um, no, I, um, no, I wouldn't forgive Ferguson for that. No. And again, I'm the first. If he shut me and go, listen, right, go in January, go on to, no problem. 
And then obviously you leave then this, the, the, the kind of uh, media spin-off. I was like, I was ranting and raving, I'd upset everybody, did it, did. all nonsense. But listen, I've been on that road before. On that, uh, in the office. So, and Gary, I'll, I'll bring you in one second. But... So there was, one, there was one other player said something, I remember. Van no, there was. Edwin van der Sar yeah. said something. Edwin had been in the door about two minutes. And he went, <laughs> You know, he'd been at the club, and I remember he was doing interviews left, right, and said, and I remember it, when the, I said, lads, I mean, you got a problem, Fletch, when you could have said that different. I said, yeah, maybe, but he went, yeah, we get it, no problem. And Edwin had his hand up, and he went, Roy, I, I think you could have been a bit, I went, Edwin, I, I think I told Edwin to shut up. I said, Edwin, I said, you've been at this club two minutes, you've done more interviews in, my, in the last two months than I've done in 12 and a half years. <laughs> so he was the only one who got a little bit of stick in the meeting. Yeah. To be fair, in your, in your book, and then Gary, please come in. But he, yeah. Gary would probably say the opposite. Well, to maybe, yeah. No, in, I, in, your own, in your own book, though, you... No, I've got, you, some, quest, I've got some questions. Yeah, yeah, well, then come yeah. in straight after. But in so, your own book, you will concede that... No, the, the better than yours, honestly. I know, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> no, I... But can I, I, can I just... Because you would say that you turn to... You know. Do you... Do you it's just a point, I just want to see if we're talking It's not more important than the point I'm going to make, so just be quiet for one second. So, at the, begin, at the beginning of the season, at the beginning of the season, um, I'd, I'd seen this happen with David Beckham over a period of sort of six to eight months at United. I'd seen it happen with, you know, you'd seen it happen with maybe other players. I think with Roy and the manager, I'd, there was always a chance that this was going to come to this. Always a chance that this was going to come to this, because I said before, they were absolute mirrors of one another. Um, unforgiving, wouldn't back down on anything, um, st stubborn but not in a way which is negative but incredibly, you know, you know, their view stuck to it, had to be sure about it, authoritative. In pre-season we, um, we went to Portugal and Roy was staying at a resort down the road, we arrived at um, the resort up the road, literally a half a mile away, about a mile away. The whole team was staying at this resort up the road. No, they weren't going. They were. Your brother didn't stay at the resort. They did. Scorsi didn't stay at they the did. resort. No, they did. They didn't. Their families, and they were going back to their families in the evenings. No, no, no. So, no, I guarantee no. you. No. So, <laughs> right. So basically, Roy was staying at a, 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 villa, a resort called Quinta de Lago, and the, the team was staying at a resort called Val de Lobo. And he came up, and to be fair, I think your, 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 your villa was unsatisfactory. Yeah. I had, Unsatisf a wife and, I had my wife and five children with me. Yeah. So he was, was pissed like off. So he, basi yeah. so he basically went back down the road to stay in the complex. So that was the first thing that happened in pre-season. I was actually training with Roy for about six weeks in the gym before this happened, and it was building up. It was building up. There were things happening where you could see this moment was sort of coming. And on the day of the, the meetings that Roy mentions, I mean, the, 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 I swapped with him. I was supposed to be doing that Middlesbrough MUTV thing. And I swapped with him because of... I was injured. He was injured, and I, I, I don't know how it happened, but we, we, we swapped, basically. We'd been, we were both injured, but we, Roy had been away or something like that. Anyway, the manager came down into the dressing room, and... Um, the minute that he said, you know, you need to watch the video, everyone needs to watch the video, and you said, yeah, come on, let's go upstairs, I thought, that's it. That's it. I, I just knew. I knew Roy. I knew the manager. He knew the manager. I just thought that was it. There was no way that he was going to step back. There was no way the manager was going to step back. There were things that were said in that room, to be honest with you, that I thought. There was a moment where you spoke to Carlos, and I think he said something to the manager that I remember. I'm not going to... So it's for you to say what you want to say. I, I, and I just think, I thought, no, there's no way that, that, there's no way that this is going to carry on. I was hoping it could. I think Roy makes a point earlier that's absolutely true. I think, because, I think if Roy had been 27, 28 at the level playing that he probably was at 27, 28, I think he did say things when he was 27, 28 that you could deem to be unacceptable. But I think at 34, it was just coming to an end. Um, and I asked, I'm going to ask Roy the question, and I know, would you, the manager, have got rid of Roy Keane, the player, after that meeting? I think you would. No. I think you would. <laughs> no, 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 I'm asking, no, 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 no. I'm going to no. ask, ask you a question. Well, I think the, the meeting was right at the end, but I, I wouldn't yeah. have let it get to that. No, but I think if a player come into the dress, I think if, if that meeting was horrific, by the way, 
I mean, it was, no, it was. It, Which meeting? The meeting in the dressing room? No, the meeting where we watched the video. Oh, it was horrific. Let's be clear here. No, I'm not, it's not funny, honestly. I, 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 you know, there were some lines in there that were, no, honestly, it was horrific. The, what are you talking about, the video or the meeting? The video, the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> the watching of the video, then the meeting after that, which was basically Roy and the manager, Carlos, Edward, the, the bit that, it was horrific. For lads in the dressing in his, room... He has it in his book what he said. Pardon? He has it in his book what he said to Kieros and Ferguson. Yeah. So. That for the lads in the dressing room who had obviously been in the club for 10, 15 years, to see this happening, it was horrific. Honestly, I mean, we spoke up, you know, Giggsy would speak up, I would speak up. I didn't, honestly, you couldn't say anything. You could not say anything. It was, you thought, oh, you knew that that was. You, you knew that that was it. You knew that that was it. I didn't. You didn't. <laughs> I. <laughs> I didn't. I, 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 I genuinely believe. I genuinely believe that Roy Keane, the manager, would have gotten rid of Roy Keane, the player, that day. No, oh, Gary, you're I think so, you, so I think, wrong, man. No, I think you would. I think you would. I think you. No, but I, I, I think you would. But actually, from our point of view, as players, we didn't have a problem. We, 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 we did not have a problem, because we, we worked with Roy for 12 years. From our point of view, I think his interview after Bayern Munich, maybe in 2002, where he went straight on to I don't know, ITV at the time, I thought that was probably more harsh than maybe the, um, the, the stuff that was said on the, on the video on the day. Uh, we, you remember you questioned the Yeah, but the manager didn't mind me doing stuff like no, that. No, that's what I mean. That's my point. I thought, with, um... I thought that was actually worse from a point of view of more public. It was more. So for me, I, I, I was sat there thinking, fuck, this is horrific. It's a bad meeting. This. It was a shocking day. It was a shocking day. Honestly, it was. And I can only say that from a point of view. Every player in that dressing room walked out of that room that day thinking, fuck it. Yeah. It's, it's good. Something's going to give here. Something's going to give. And it had been coming on it for a month. It had been coming for a month or six weeks. There was something else happened. I can't remember what it was. Something else happened before that, I think. There was something else happened, I thought, it's, it's just... I'd, saw it, I'd seen it with Bex, you know, where that, that relationship starts, that's how Bex is, you know, in, in the stand that leads, if you remember. Yeah, yeah. And you just see it happening, and you just think... Phew. It'd be easy to look at that as a sliding doors moment of e swapping to do that Middlesbrough game, but the way you're talking, even if you hadn't gone on MUTV, something would have happened around then? No, was the writing I, I on the wall? I see slightly different to Gary, as I would do, because I was obviously in the middle of it. But even, again, I suppose my few hang-ups is go, yeah, there was all that tension. And just say, yeah, it was coming to a breaking point. Then you handle it differently. Would it be, I'm sitting down with David Gill, and they're passing me statements about how long I've been at the club, cash flow problems, leaving, another, you can sign for another club. These, these are just lies. That's no, the bit. We, we obviously we, we didn't see. Yeah, of course. If, I'm, hearing, course I'm hearing this for the first time. That bit. I mean, I, I'd not heard that. But we, we obviously were after the Friday. Yeah. Um, after the, after the sorry the Wednesday whatever it was it Tuesday or Wednesday the the, the, the meeting happened with the um, with the video. What happened after that? I don't think you came in. Did you not come in for two days or did you come in? I think How I was. Yeah. Was you? Yeah. Where else were I gone? <laughs> 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 to your own villa in Portugal, then. <laughs> I tell you the strange thing about the villa. I go back to this. I, <laughs> you you started to, something now. No, no, no. Let me said. finish this now. He came up. He said, "Your brother's involved in this." <laughs> I've been on holiday for a week. This is vital. I came up with Carlos because he's Portuguese. It was his pal doing all the villas. Brought me to this villa. My daughter's here tonight, and she'll back me up. She was one at the time, but she backed me up. <laughs> now, we walked around. My wife is a very placid woman, believe it or not. And we walked around this villa. Carlos was involved in it. And I remember going, there's glass tables. There was a plunge pool. It was like three bedrooms. And I'm going, this won't do with the family. Just obviously, I'm with five kids at the time. Going, no. And I remember saying to Carlos, but we just, and I rang the people who we just left the villa from. And we were paying that. And I went, is it available for another week? And ironically, what I found out later on, Scolzi wasn't staying on the resort. He was staying down with his family. No big deal. And I think Phil and the manager eventually got upset at me. But what he was doing was organizing lunches. And I guarantee you, me and my wife and my family were at every lunch and every meal where all the other players were off to. So this idea that I was off site yeah, yeah. and doing my own thing. And I remember the manager came. He, he came out one or two days late. That was it. 
And Carlos obviously was saying, I had a follow with Roy, and he's staying at this villa. And Ferguson pulled me in again in the dressing room, and the players were effing and blinding. Going, I said, what is the big... Like, really, to me, going... You, you. And I felt like saying, well, there's other players staying outside, but I didn't want to throw them under the bus with me. And I remember going, what? And it, really over-the-top stuff. And I remember we were training the next day, and a typical Ferguson. We're all doing stretches, and he walks over. If you remember this, because the owner of the complex as well, or one of the owners was a Dutch guy. <laughs> Ferguson, do you remember? Yeah. <laughs> So, for, so we're all sitting there doing stretches. <laughs> we're all doing stretches. First came over, I'm looking for some senior players. Walk past me, obviously. Forget that I'm the captain. I need some senior players, you know. Uh, Gary, Ryan, and whoever it was. You've got to go for the Chinese tonight. Am I right? Was it a Chinese? I think it may have been, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Chinese. I did we going for the Chinese. Did, uh, yeah, without you, Roy, you know, like, you can stick your Chinese. So it was all that kind of, basically, all Ferguson's fault. I, I, <laughs> I, I, and I like I, the Chinese as well, I thought. I always, I always remember saying, you know, all these things that were wrong with his villa, and then like this delay, saying, and the pool's fucking freezing. <laughs> it was a plunge pool. It was, yeah, a it was plunge. freezing. <laughs> I <have> five children. <laughs> Christ. Um. The pool was cold. The Would you have stayed there? You, know, how, you just how, told me you've been skiing five times in the last year. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you get the money for that? I like it. <laughs> Jesus. <It's> loaded. <laughs> and so that was the start of it. Yeah, no, sure. <laughs> <laughs> the clock's against us. So just one, literally one last question on it, really. You know when you're in the office and you've just watched the video and the stuff you're referencing, Roy talks about it in his book, what he said to Kiroz, I won't repeat it here. You know, you've a bit of a go at Ferguson. Does any part of you when you're in that zone where... Stuff's coming out, think, I am crossing the line here. I'm no, no, you've got you know, to relax yourself here a second. <laughs> same upside pan, people say, oh, you know, could you handle it differently? Yeah. Yeah, could you stood back? <laughs> what, and let people walk all over you? There's, the key uh, is, when I watch this video, yeah. what, whatever the book was said afterwards, <laughs> listen, I'm sure you're going to later, same upside pan, people, people making accusations against you, and you're sitting there going, what do you want to say? Going, no, that, yeah, that's fine, you keep... You're gonna fight, you have to fight your corner, you have to defend yourself. Hmm. And what, again, the key for me is whatever the video on Gary said it was intense. We had a lot of heated discussions over the years, sometimes as a team, but you gotta roll with that. That's grown men, we're fighting for the same things. There is gonna be a bit of argy bargy. I'm sure there's people here working in industries where things get heated. I didn't leave the office that day and thinking, that's the end of my career at Manchester. Okay. I didn't think so. Okay. Listen, I didn't think it was all great. You know, let, let, let's go for a bite to eat tonight. But I'm thinking, <laughs> This is all. And sometimes I think when you have these debates or heated arguments, I think it's good. I think it's good because you're all looking for the same things. You're all hungry. You want the same thing. No problem. But if you think I'm going to sit there, I don't, I don't care if it's Alex Ferguson or the Pope. <laughs> and they start saying, yeah, you've got to do it. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to fight my corner. What do you want me to do? Yeah. But then, because I tell you, if I sat there and said that, and I got to the players would be going, Hey, what's up with him? Just like a few months earlier when Carlos Queiroz threw the bib at me when you just stand up front. Okay. I had to take that and go, all right, listen, sometimes the coaches are upset with something. I, listen, I'll roll with it. Yeah. But when they treat you with such disrespect and then put statements in front of you and say, all right, thanks for 11 and a half. All the, all the folks know what you was pulling me a couple of days later going, listen, right, your days are numbered. We'll get to January or let's get to the end of the season. Okay. And I tell you what, I was at the club when Brian Robson left. I was at the club when Steve Bruce left. Two brilliant servants for Man United, and I didn't like the way they were treated at the end. So people talk about Ferguson's man management. Don't be kidded on by all of it either. Yeah. Don't be kidded on by all that. And Ferguson came out afterwards going, well, I always done what was best for United, Manchester United. Nonsense. His son played for the club, won a league medal, Darren. Very lucky. His His brother was chief scout for Man United for a long time. Hey, listen, I'm surprised his wife wasn't involved on the staff somewhere. <laughs> Darren, his son, was at Preston one time. Darren loses his job. A couple of young players on loan for Man United. Guess what happens the next day? They're pulled out of Preston. Is that what's doing the best for Man United? Do me a favor. <laughs> when. So in, in Pretamonje this morning, I was so <laughs> calm. <laughs> when did you last speak to Ferguson? Yesterday. Not since then, obviously. 
Not one conversation. I think when he apologizes to me, I probably will say hello to him, yeah. No, <laughs> no interest in speaking to the man. Nothing even over the past year, the ill health made you think, maybe I'll just give him a call. Maybe life's too short. No. <laughs> when he apologizes to me. And David Gill. No problem. Have we got another, have we got another section? <laughs> We've gone slightly longer there than planned. We're going to take a very short interval and then we'll come back and wrap things up and do another bit. So, uh, Lloyd Keane and Karen Neville, everyone. Are we on here? Yeah. <laughs>